morning and welcome to the curb. We're so glad that you're here to worship with us this morning. Why don't you go ahead and stand up? My world was shaking, my heart was broken, my hope was fading, the walls were closing in, but now I'm singing, look how he lifted me. My life was sinking, my days were numbered, the waves were crashing, the flood was coming in, oh hallelujah, look how he lifted me. Kingdom man. 
coming to this current service this morning. Why don't you greet your neighbor, let them know you're glad they're here, and then you can take a seat. Good morning. I'm Mary Ann Novak, and I'm really thankful to be here today, and I'm even more thankful to see all of you here today. In a moment, Pastor Brian will be up here to talk to us about the five little reminders of thankfulness. When you came in today, um, inside your program is this current, or is the connection card. Um, if you're not familiar with it, on the front it says the current connection card. And over here on the left, there's a place where all of us can mark the appropriate box. And for those of you who are um, members or frequent attenders, if you would just put your name and your email address on there, that would be great. For those of you who are new to our services, we're so thankful you're here today. And we'd like to welcome you and we'd like to get to know you a little better. So um, there's other areas where you can fill out any information that you would like for us to know. Um, on the back of that card, oh, then hold on to those cards and we'll just put them in the offering basket at the end of the service. That's not good. Okay, um, on the back of the connection card, uh, there are some next steps. 
Uh, the first one is a sign up for the Hanging of the Greens, and that will happen next Sunday with Sharon Wybrew in charge of transforming our church um, for the Christmas season. Um, now I'm going to veer off of my little script here a minute. I may not get the privilege of doing this again. <laughs> But anyway, I just talked to Sharon. Um, she is having surgery on her shoulder on Wednesday. That means it really needs to be done on Tuesday. Sometimes it drags on for a whole week. And you know, the myth that little elves come in at night and do this is wrong. So I would encourage anybody who's interested in that to check that box on the back. Um, after this service, Next Sunday, there will be a light meal for anyone who's interested in um, decorating our church. And I've done this before. It's work, but it sure is fun um, to do it in fellowship with other people from our church. Um, let's see here. Uh, there's also going to be two Advent studies uh, this season. One, uh, small group studies. One will be on Thursday evenings, and it's going to be taught by uh, Abby and Kevin Gross, and it will be at 6.30 p.m. on Thursdays. And the other one will be led by Pastor Kelly at noon on Fridays. So um, if you are interested in either one of those studies, there's also a box to check on the back of our card. We have so much to be thankful for, and also so many things to pray for. In the bulletin, you will see a prayer window. If you would please just take a moment or two to look over that window, maybe say a quick prayer for those that are in it, and then take it with you and pray for those people this week. I know they all are in need and would greatly appreciate it. And that's what we do as Christian people. We pray for each other. If you have any prayer requests, you can also write them on the back of that card. But if you um, do not want them to be in the weekly prayer email, then please just make sure you mark that box confidential. Would you all please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of this day. Please help us to use it wisely and to your glory and help us to be truly thankful for all it holds. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this morning at uh, 9 o'clock, we dedicated our new prayer chapel. Now, for those of you that may wonder where the prayer chapel is, it's uh, the other end of the building on the main floor. It's next to the elevator. So it's uh, there between the elevator and the hub. And we uh, dedicated the, the prayer chapel. And, and I just want to tell you some, uh, some things about it that I think are, are kind of neat. The, um, the door of the prayer chapel has a stained glass window in it. And when, uh, when we were talking about you know, what we wanted the prayer chapel to look like and, and everything, we looked at that door that was solid at the time. We said, you know, it'd be nice to have a stained glass window in there. And we were able to find some stained glass that had been a part of the building before the mid-90s when, when we did some remodeling. And so someone took a, uh, one of those old windows and uh, repurposed it so it could go in the, the door of the, the prayer chapel. Also in the prayer chapel, there, there's an altar, and at the, at the foot of the cross, at the, um, the trim around the, the, uh, the top of the altar, and then also the trim that's around the, um, the, the kneeling bench at, uh, around the altar, there's trim, and that wood trim came from Bolivia. It was actually a part of the, 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 the box that they sent Larry Pample home in when he died in 2015. And so uh, Wayne Kruger took that, that box and, and repurposed it and was able to, uh, to use it for, for some of the trim in the, in the prayer chapel. And then at the foot of the cross, there is some Jerusalem stone. And it's stone that actually came from the heart of Jerusalem, was a part of the second temple, which would have been the, the temple that was in place at the time that, that uh, Jesus was... was um, in, in Israel at the time Jesus was living. So these would have been stones that would have been a part of the retaining wall or, or the foundation of the, the second temple, which is where uh, Jesus would have gone uh, for, for worship and when he went to the temple. Also would have been in the temple courts 
when, uh, when Jesus was, was teaching during his, his public ministry and, and especially in those days before he was crucified. So it's just neat to, to think some of, the, some of the historical pieces that we have in, in that prayer chapel that uh, yeah, not only touch this congregation, but, but also um, touch our, our history as, as followers of Christ. But, but the prayer chapel is not intended to be a monument. It's not intended to be a museum. It's intended to be a place where we, we go and, and use and, and we, we pray. You know, someone asks, when, when's it available? And, and basically, any time you can get into the building, you know, the prayer chapel is available. You know, I hope that um, it becomes one of the most used rooms that we have in, in, the, in the church. So I would encourage you to, after the service uh, today, go and, and check it out, but also would encourage you in the next few days to, uh, to try and find some time to, to come and, and just spend time in, in prayer there. There's uh, anointing oil, there's, um, there's a, a prayer devotional guide, and uh, we don't have it yet, but we're going to have a prayer journal in there and would even encourage people to, uh, to write uh, their, maybe their prayer requests as well as their, their praises. So that's a, a new thing in the life of the congregation, and I hope that you will check it out. And more than check it out, I hope that, uh, I hope that you will use the, the prayer chapel. Well, this week, we're celebrating a holiday in, in our nation that we call Thanksgiving. Now, Thanksgiving started nearly 400 years ago. You know, it was a, a holiday that began with the celebration with the, uh, with the pilgrims. Uh, the pilgrims, a, a group that had landed at Plymouth Rock in, in Massachusetts. Now, the group of pilgrims that was on the Mayflower actually intended to land, I think it was in Virginia, they were planning to land a, a little bit further south, but, but because of storms, they got pushed to the north, and soon after they, they landed, uh, you know, winter set in, they didn't have time to prepare for the winter. That, that first winter was, was a very rough time for, for the pilgrims, the, the, the bad weather, as well as uh, they had limited provision. And because of, of limited shelter, they, they were cold. There was a lot of sickness. There was a lot of illness. There was also a, a lot of death. Um, Governor William Bradford describes that first winter as the most sad and, and lamentable season that he had ever experienced. He said that uh, there were some days that two and three people would, would die. He said actually in that, that first winter in the colony, they dug seven times as many graves as they, they built shelters where people might, uh, might be able to, to live or, or um, be free of the, the elements. You know, it was an issue that <clears throat> you know, there was a, <clears throat> a supply ship that was supposed to come and, um, and give them provisions that were going to, to help them to, to be able to survive. But when that supply ship arrived, it brought 35 more people, 35 more mouths to feed, but they brought little to, to no provisions with them. You know, it was a very rough, rough start for, for the pilgrims, but, but they had come to, you know, to, to the colonies, they'd come to, to what is now the, the United States, they'd come to uh, start a new life. They had come for, uh, for religious freedom. You know, as they came to, to this new world, even, even this new land, even though it was, was a, a difficult time, they still found it within themselves to, to give thanks to God. In, in 1621, Edward Winslow, one of the 50 or so members of the Plymouth Colony, wrote these words describing the first Thanksgiving. Our harvest of corn <clears throat> came in well, <clears throat> and God be praised. Excuse me. <clears throat> All right. We'll see if it got rid of it there. Um, you know, God to be praised. We, we had a good increase of Indian corn, and our barley crop was also good. You know, they were wanting to never forget how God had brought them through that first winter. So they gathered together and had a, a Thanksgiving meal. Now, tradition has it that as the pilgrims gathered for um, a Thanksgiving meal, they started with empty plates that had five grains of corn on their plate. So this morning as you came in, you, you should have received a, a little bag with, with five grains of corn in it. And what the pilgrims would do as that was on their plate was they would pick up one of those grains and they would would say what it is that, 
<clears throat> that they were thankful for. You know, and it's kind of like the Passover meal that the children of Israel would, would, uh, would share together. And uh, they would remember God's faithfulness. They would remember how God had delivered them from, from the hands of, of Pharaoh in, in Egypt. Well, the pilgrims, as they had these five grains of, of corn on their plate, they would remember that tough winter. They would remember the heartache. They would remember the grief. They would remember what it was that, that God had brought them through. So as they were, were celebrating their, um, their, their Thanksgiving meal together, they would remember you know, God's faithfulness and, and what they were, were thankful for. As Christians, we should always remember that even in the most difficult circumstances, we can still trust God. You know, and I want to encourage you to take that, those five grains of, of corn this week and put them someplace that, that you can see them regularly. And as you see them, may they be a, a reminder for you of, of God's faithfulness, a reminder to you of, of thinking about ways for which you are thankful you know, today, as we, as we look forward to Thanksgiving, we're going to be looking at another psalm. We're going to be looking at, at Psalm 103. And as we look at the 103rd Psalm, there are, are five things that, that the psalmist talks about for which we can be thankful. So as you look at those, those grains of, of corn, you may think of things in your own life for which you are thankful, but, but also you could use this psalm as a guide of, of five things, uh, might say five little things or five big things for which you can be thankful in your life. Hear these words from Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The, the psalmist talks about five things for which we can, can be thankful. We can be thankful for not only on Thanksgiving Day, but, but on, on every day. First of all, in, in verse 3, we're told that we can be thankful because God forgives. God forgives our sins. Well, we live in a day when we don't like to talk about sin. We don't like to admit that we have sinned. You know, it's an issue that we try and make excuses or, or justify why we do what we do. And if we can justify it, then it, it so, must be okay at, at that point. You know, despite our best effort to justify ourselves, the fact remains that we are all sinners. The Bible tells us in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have failed to, to embrace God's best for us. And we, when we fail to embrace what God desires for us, then that failure on our part is, is called sin. So for some, experiencing God's forgiveness is is more of a cognitive exercise. You know, they, they read what it is that God's word says and, and they, they believe it, they trust it, they, they do what, what uh, God's word says. You know, in uh, 1 John 1, 9, it, it, the Bible tells us that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, for others, uh, forgiveness can, can be a, an, an, an emotional experience. I remember a, a time when, when Sam first asked for, for God's forgiveness in, in his life. You know, at that point, he, he was broken and, and he was weeping. You know, he, he was broken because of the, the sin in, in his life, but he was weeping tears of joy because of, of the forgiveness that he was experiencing and, and that the, his burden had been lifted. You know, forgiveness is not something that, that we earn, but it's a gift to, to be received. We look down a little bit further in the psalm down to, to verse 10. It says, God does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. You know, God doesn't repay us as our sin would deserve. You know, God shows us mercy. You know, 
when someone is, is in a court of law, when, when they've been found guilty or when they've, they've pleaded guilty to, to a crime. They may stand before the judge and, and, and the judge might be able to sentence them to, to 20 years in jail. But they, the judge shows mercy and only sentences them to, to, to 10 years. Mercy is not getting the, the punishment that, that we deserve. You know, God shows us mercy. You know, he does not treat us as our sins deserve and, and repay us according to our iniquities. God's forgiveness is complete. In verse 12, it says that as far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our transgressions or, or sins from us. You know, the, the east never meets the west. So when God takes our sins as far as the east is from the west, he takes them completely away. He remembers them no more. As you take these kernels of corn with you this morning, may one of them remind you of God's forgiveness. And because of God's forgiveness in your life, may you be thankful. If you're carrying a burden this morning, if you're carrying regret, if you're carrying unconfessed sin, you know, the Bible tells us that if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to, to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from, from all unrighteousness. Uh, today... You know, it is a day that you can be thankful for a new beginning that, that God offers as we confess our sin to him. The second reason to be thankful is because God heals. God heals our diseases. God doesn't always heal in, in the way we would desire or, or in the time that we desire. But God is still a healer even today. God still works miracles in the world in which we live. However, I also believe that, that God works through, through doctors and, and medical professionals because I believe that all truth is God's truth. So as God has revealed his truth to medical professionals, they are able to, to respond to, to our physical needs and help to, to bring healing and, and restore wholeness. We recently had a friend who was only 48 years old and and he suffered a cardiac arrest. You know, fortunately, there was someone who knew CPR there. It was actually a senior in high school uh, who immediately began giving Paul CPR. As the ambulance arrived, they had to shock his heart five times b before it, it restarted. But uh, Paul and his wife were, were so thankful for, for the ways that God had brought people around them to, to help him in his time of need. Now, Paul had... a. A, a great cardiologist, and he's, he's thankful for the cardiologist that he had. But Paul was sharing with me that uh, his cardiologist seemed to be pretty full of himself. You know, the, the cardiologist didn't acknowledge that, uh, that, that his skill came from anyone except being a, a, a self-made doctor. You know, he was, was pretty full of himself and, and didn't recognize God's hand of, of blessing and, and the way that, that God had been in, involved in, in saving, saving Paul's life. You know, he wasn't willing to acknowledge the, the truth that, that, uh, that God had revealed knowledge about the, the human body and, and therefore doctors were, were able to, to uh, respond and, and help to repair uh, the, the creation uh, and, the, and to respond to, to the wonders of, of the human body. God brings physical healing, but God also brings spiritual healing. In our brokenness, he is the great physician. Uh, may a second kernel of corn remind you that, uh, that God is a, is a God of, of healing, a, a God who heals. God is also our redeemer. He rescues our life from the pit. Now, in the Old Testament, if, if someone lost their property, maybe they owed a debt to, to someone for, for whatever reason, they, they lost their property, their property was taken from them, sometimes a, a relative would buy that property back, would redeem that property and give it back to, to their, their family member. They, they would redeem them. They, they would bail them out of an impossible situation by buying back the, their relative's property. In the, in the movie Schindler's List, 
It's a movie that's based upon a, a true story during World War II of, of, of Schindler who would, would pay the, the Nazis and buy prisoners, would, would buy Jews out of the concentration camps to go to work in his factory. Now, uh, the Jews may, or the, the Nazis may have thought that he was like buying slaves to, to work in, in his factories, but Schindler was, was so moved by, by the, the fact that um, you know, he was, was trying to save the Jews. He was trying to save as many as, as he could from, uh, from, from the pit of the concentration camp and, and save them from, uh, from execution. You know, he was their redeemer. He helped them out of a, a pit that they could not get out of by themselves. You know, we can be thankful because God is our redeemer. He can rescue our life from the pit. Maybe you have a, a broken relationship. Maybe you have an, an, extra, an, extra, an extra, a strange relationship with a, with a family member or, or with a friend. You know, and and in, that, in that struggle, you, know, you may think that it's impossible for that relationship ever to be repaired. But God is our Redeemer. God can, can do miracles in the midst of the impossible. You may be avoiding the relationship because you see no way to bring about reconciliation, but God can redeem that relationship. It may never return to the relationship that, that it once was, but God can do what seems impossible to us. Maybe you've made some choices and as a result of, of those, those choices, you, know, it's, you feel like you've dug a, a proverbial hole for yourself, dug a hole so deep that you can, can never get out of. You know, God can do the impossible. God can help us to, to redeem a, a, a horrible situation. But it often begins with us confessing our need and, and asking for his help, asking for him to to work a miracle. The governor of Texas once spoke to a, a group of convicts in, a, in a, a state penitentiary. And after he finished talking to them, he said, I'll stick around and, and talk to a, as many of you as, as would like to, to speak to me after, the, after I'm done. And as you can imagine, there were a lot of prisoners that stayed around to, to talk to the governor, and, and most of them would, would tell the governor a, a story of, of how they'd been taken advantage of, how the, how the system had failed them, how it is that, that uh, they had experienced a, an injustice or, or a judicial blunder. Each of the, the prisoners, as they explained their case and why they shouldn't be in jail, you know, they would ask the, the governor to, to pardon them or to release them. That was the story for all of them except one. And one prisoner talked to the governor and said, Governor, I'm, I'm guilty. I did the crime that, that I have been convicted of. But he said, even though I, I'm guilty and I was sent here for, for good reason, he said, I, I believe that, that I've paid my, my debt to society. And, and if I'm freed, I would do everything I could to be a good citizen and prove myself worthy of your mercy. Of all the pleas that were made before the governor, the governor only pardoned this one man because he was willing to take responsibility for, for his sin. And he was willing to, to admit his, his guilt. We can't always undo the consequences of our sin, but God can give us a, a fresh start, especially as we have a, an honest confession and and ask for his help. The five little reminders from, from Psalm 103 are that uh, a reminder that, uh, that God forgives, that God heals, God redeems, and then fourthly, that uh, God shows us love and compassion. In verse 13 of, of Psalm 103, it, it says, as a, in verse 13, it says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. A good parent always wants to do what is best for their children. Now, doing what's best for, for their children doesn't mean 
that um, they give them whatever they want. It doesn't mean that they never discipline them. It doesn't mean that, that they never say no. Oh, but a good parent always does what is best for their child. And one of the things that we can be thankful for with God in our life is that God is loving and compassionate. God always responds to us in the way that is best for us. Your fifth reason that uh, Psalm 103 tells us to, to be thankful is because God satisfies our desires for good things. Uh, to put it a w another way, God blesses us. You know, God pours out his blessing in our lives, and, and for that we can be thankful. Now, when it comes to God's blessing, we can't manipulate God. We can't force God's hand, but the Bible does tell us that there are things that we can do to position ourselves in order to experience God's blessing. And some of the ways that we can position ourselves to experience God's blessing is, first of all, to, to be obedient, you know, to, to put into practice the principles, the, the truth that's in his word. As we do that, the Bible tells us that, that we experience God's blessing. When we experience God's blessing in our lives, our, our load is lighter. And actually, um, you know, the, the next verse even talks about the, um, the fact that when, uh, when we experience God's, God's blessing in our life, we actually feel younger. You know, it, it's an issue that uh, the, the Bible you know, talks about, um, uses the symbol of, of eagles, uh, and uses the symbol of eagles, and, and, and they're, they're soaring in life. And as we experience God's blessing, it's as if we are, are soaring in life. Our, our load is lighter. Uh, this week, I want you to, um, to put these, these five grains of, of corn someplace that you're, you're going to see them, that you're going to see them often. And as you, um, as you look at the, the grains of corn, I hope it will remind you of, of the memory verse, which comes from Psalm 103, verse 2. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. As you remember, as you are thankful for what it is that, that God has, has done in your life, may, may the kernels be a, a reminder to you that uh, God is, is faithful to, to forgive, that God is a healer, that God is a redeemer, that, that God shows his love and compassion to us and, and, that, uh, and also that God pours out his blessing in our life. You know, when we live as thankful people, it lightens our load and we are a greater encouragement to others. Well, this morning is, um, you know, I, I want to encourage you to, uh, to memorize that, that, that memory verse from from uh, Psalm 103, verse 2. You'll praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. And as you remember all of his benefits, remembering those things that we've, we've talked about this morning, you know, uh, other next steps that you, you might be able to take the, this week is if, if you've asked for, for God's forgiveness, you know, in, in this day, or you've been convicted that you need to ask for God's forgiveness, check that next step that, that you've asked for God's forgiveness. And, and even as you check that, that's kind of a, a step that's an acknowledgement, maybe a confession of such and recognizing the, that you've asked God for forgiveness in, in your life. Also, another next step this week is, uh, you know, as God ha has blessed you, look for an opportunity each day to be a blessing to someone else's life. You know, we're encouraged in Scripture to, to follow the, the example of Christ, to, to follow you know, godly principles in our life. And so as God pours blessing into your life, may you pour blessing into to the lives of others. You know, and another next step that, that you can, can take this week is, is the, uh, the pilgrims had, had a tradition of, of having the, the five kernels of, of corn on their plate and remembering something for which they're thankful you know, may you take time to, to recognize something that you're thankful for the, this week, but, but more than you just recognizing it personally, taking an opportunity to share with someone else what it is that God has done in your life and how it is that you're thankful. Let's pray together. 
Lord, we thank you for, for your goodness. May we never forget the ways that you are faithful, that you have been faithful to your people in generations gone by, but also for your faithfulness in our own lives. Lord, I pray that you would give each of us hearts of gratitude. And as we have hearts of, of gratitude, as our load is, is lightened, may we soar like, like eagles. May we trust you. And may we reflect you uh, into the lives of others. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Well, this morning as we come to our, our offering, would uh, remind you to, to please take your connection card and uh, fill out as much information on that card as you're comfortable sharing. If you're a first-time guest with us this morning, we're, we're glad that you're here. Please stop at the, um, at the starting point on your way out as we have a gift that we want to, uh, to give you a, as you go. Also, a, a reminder that uh, as you, you give of, of your tithes and offerings, you know, it goes to support the, the various ministries and, and outreaches of, of this church. And as, as we give of our tithes and offering, it, it's a response you know, that we're showing our thankfulness to God. And in turn, we seek to, um, to make a difference through the ministries of this church uh, to, to our community and also around the world. Let, let's pray together. Lord, as we give of our tithes and our offerings, as we offer ourselves to you as, as servants in this week, to be a blessing to, to others and, and to, uh, to share with others the, uh, the thankfulness that's, that's in our heart. Lord, may you bless what we give and may you use it to make a difference for your kingdom here in Monticello and also around the world. Through Christ our Lord we pray, amen. Well, I would invite the, the ushers to come forward as we receive our offering and, and also uh, put your connection cards in. And Marianne, I think you've got some more announcements for us. Okay. Tonight there is a community Thanksgiving service at the Presbyterian Church at 6 p.m., uh, I think that'd be a nice opportunity for us to join together with other churches in our community for a night of Thanksgiving. Friendship Connection will meet again as usual. And Revolution and 648 will have their Thanksgiving meals tonight. And if you plan on coming, you are asked to bring either a side dish or a dessert to share with all the others. This week we'll be hosting our annual community Thanksgiving meal. And if you would like to serve in some capacity, please see Pastor Brian after the service. There is also a sign-up sheet at the starting point out there to the left. It looked to me this morning like there were still a lot of blank sign-ups. So it's really a wonderful time to serve God and, and others. Um, and we also could use a, just a few more pies. And being the pie lady... I watch that kind of carefully. So let's see here. There's also the Everything Christmas Rummage Sale. Rummage Sale will be here in two weeks. And you can start bringing your items in for that sale on Monday, November 26th. And I do know that they are also looking for people who are willing to help with that sale with pricing and setup. And out there where we have the donuts, at least this morning that's where they were, is a little sign-up sheet that divides the times up. And I know they would be grateful if you're willing to help with that. If you ordered gift cards and have not yet picked them up, uh, we will be outside um, of Connection Court uh, with what's left of them. Um, and we will make sure you get them. Uh, we did very well with that, by the way. We sold 1,088 cards, and we made almost $1,700, so well done. Uh, please check the bulletin for other upcoming events and announcements. It's been a great day. We look forward to seeing all of you next Sunday, either at the Classic Service at 9.30 or right back here at The Current at 11 a.m. Let's stand and sing together one more time. My world was shaken, my heart was broken, 
My hope was fading, the walls were closing in, but now I'm singing. Look how he lifted me. My life was sinking, my days were numbered. The waves were crashing, the flood was coming in. Oh, hallelujah, look how he lifted me. Grace and mercy is my testimony for every victory. I've got a song to sing. Look how he lifted me. Thanks for coming to worship this morning. Have an awesome day. We can't wait to see you next week. You turn my morning back into dancing. Turn my weeping to a shout again. And now I'm singing. Look how he lifted me. He rolled my sorrows away at Calvary. He rose in triumph over the enemy. Oh, hallelujah. Look how he lifted me. Oh, look how he lifted me. Grace and mercy is my testimony for every victory. I've got a song to sing. Oh, look how he lifted me. His grace and mercy is my testimony for every victory. I've got a song to sing.